This video is going to be me responding to a few of the comments I've received on a few of the uh, videos. The most recent comment was on the uh, second most recent video, the one about the afterlife. The comment pretty much was, that's, that's some good bullshit, which is exactly the point in that video. I was trying to show that even though the scientific method is great, that that should not be let it limit ourselves, that we can go beyond it, not by, not through superstition or whatever, but through actual, but by mathematics or inductive reasoning. The whole point of that video is to start with what we know to be true and then expand on it or come to conclusions, try to answer questions that science either can't answer or won't answer. That that video was an extreme version of that. Uh, a better version of what I mean is the video about UFOs or the uh, video about the Fermi's Paradox. Those two, I think, come to not necessarily a absolute conclusion, but what could be or what might be. Starting out with science, but not stopping where science can go no further. Reach a conclusion that that might be the truth, that could be the truth, using reason, never leaving reason behind. So so the comment, that video, the afterlife, that's some good bullshit is exactly correct. It is some good bullshit. Another comment was more of a question actually. Why going faster than the speed of light or the speed of causality? Why would that cause you to time travel, to be able to travel through time? My idea of describing that phenomenon is a triangle idea. A, uh, based on the idea that uh, if you can witness the same event twice, then you are proving, at least to yourself, that, uh, that you have time travel. So the triangle time travel idea is pretty much this, that the first point of the triangle would be the event that you're trying to witness multiple times. The, the second point of the triangle would be your first perspective, the first time you witness the event. The third point of the triangle would be the, the second perspective, the, the point at which you witness the same event for a second time. Hopefully this will be a better explanation for my time travel triangle idea. So the first point of the triangle would be the event. The event that if we're able to witness twice will prove that we're time traveling. The second point of the triangle being the uh, first perspective, the first perspective or the first point of view when we witness the, tr the event for the first time. The third uh, point of the triangle is the second perspective when we view the same event for a second time, proving that we time travel. So assuming, assuming that this is a right angle triangle, or in other words, that this angle is 90 degrees, and assuming that this distance from, from the event to the first perspective is x and from the uh, first perspective to the second perspective is 2x then that means that the distance from the event to the uh, second perspective should be square root of 5x which should equal more or less 2.2x so when the photons from the event go the distance of 1x and we are able to witness the event the same photons would be of a distance of uh, 1x. From here to here would be 1x. So the remainder will be 1.2x. So if we're able to travel from this perspective to this perspective a distance of 2x before the photons are faster than the speed of causality in 2x, we will be able to witness the same event for a second time. So if we can travel this distance faster than causality can travel this distance, we will we'll be in essence time traveling. Uh, hopefully that made a little bit more sense than my earlier description. The third comment was uh, in reference to what I called, I said in a video, I can't remember which video right now, I said in a video that, that I don't like to call the four forces of nature, gravity, the weak force, the strong force, and magnetism, that I don't like to call them forces because forces imply magical, like there's nothing behind them, that there's nothing causing those that phenomena. So I'm not very familiar with the first three forces, 
but I am extremely familiar with gravity. And the way I've been able to understand how gravity works, it I refer to it as a mechanism instead of a force. And I suspect the other three forces also have a mechanism behind them causing that effect. So somebody commented that I should not call a mechanism because mechanism, according to them, refers to like machine, like gears. Well, I'm not sure about the first three forces, but with gravity, time dilation differences that is pulling you down, that is causing the effect that we call gravity. So I do see it like a mechanism. It's the word, it's the only word that seems to make sense to me. Force, I never liked it. Even before I, I figured out, or at least I thought that I figured it out. I didn't like that word because I knew that word could not be. I think to, to truly understand gravity, the best word for it is a mechanism. I understand why that would not seem to make sense because uh, it implies an actual physical machine with gears. But uh, that's what I'm trying to imply, that there is a mechanism, like sort of like gears with teeth, that is causing gravity. And those teeth is time dilation between any two different elevations from Earth. There is time dilation ever so slightly, but it's there. And that's what's pulling us down. Time at this elevation is flowing ever so slightly slower than at this elevation. We can't measure it, we can't possibly measure it because it's so small, but that, in my opinion, is what's causing the gravity effect, which is pulling us down towards Earth. It And it doesn't matter the size of, of the object. Any two objects have space-time or time dilation condensed around it. So as the two objects flow through each other's time dilation, uh, they get pulled towards each other. And what causes time dilation? Well, it's matter displaces space-time, making it condense around objects. And not just around objects, but throughout the objects. It's, I don't. I haven't made one of these uh, videos in a long while because I hardly get comments. I uh, would really appreciate it, whoever watches this video, comment about it, comment say what you actually think don't worry about my feelings don't worry that uh, that i might get <laughs> my feelings hurt it's next to impossible the reason i m i make these videos is to get comments like i've said in previous videos i'm trying to minimize my stupidity and and the only way i can do that is by getting uh people to comment on my videos to set me straight to tell me if i'm wrong why i'm wrong and if i'm right or if you think I might be right, why you think I might be right. I'm not doing this just to, uh, to make videos, I'm doing this for an actual purpose. I guess that's it. <laughs>